Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. And today I have something really exotic, really rare. Old Lewis Hunter Bourbon. Six years old, 43% ABV. Whiskey base 57480. And this was bottled in the 70s. A closed distillery. T.J. McGibbon. Founded in 19, I'm sorry, 1850, his own distillery. And he had a brand of whiskey called the Excelsior. Well, during Prohibition, the plant was closed. Before that, it had been sought, sold and bought by a few other people. And um, 1932, they had to rebuild it. It was just totally run down. And so, 1942, Seagram bought this newly built distillery, used it mainly to produce high volume alcohol for World War II. And then in 1947, they closed it down. 1958 to 1974, this distillery, the Old Lewis Hunter Distillery, named after an old hunter named Lewis from the area, um, they actually produced bourbons. They had um, over 60,000 barrels in their warehouses. And then the bourbon crash came in the 70s and the 80s. In the 1980s, they actually tried to use this distillery to make ethanol, a type of corn fuel. And um, they never actually went to production. They just tested some things and so on. There was an interesting video online. These are these guys that go into these abandoned buildings like they did in the area of Chernobyl, and they found this old distillery, the old Lewis Hunter distillery, and they filmed it, and they went in through those broken windows and the doors, and those are graffiti, and you see the trees growing up. And there's another site where you can actually see pictures from back then in the um, 50s, 40s, and then today, and the before and after pictures where you see the trees coming out through the roof and so on. Really, really interesting to see these old closed places I don't think anyone's going to put money into this and try to revitalize the old old Lewis Hunter distillery. But hey, you never know in the bourbon boom. Maybe this video right here will encourage someone to do exactly that. So my nose says, ah, this is some really great smelling whiskey. I get a nice wild cherry. Corn on the cob on the grill with butter. I get a new type, a little bit of leather is even in there. Some wood, some caramel, some toffee. Some of that seawater toffee, a saltwater ta taffy even. Taffy and toffee, yeah, both. Taffy and toffee. And just a tiny little bit of um, alcohol with a lot of caramel. I say caramel, you, I, you say caramel, I say caramel. All right, so let's taste it. 46, 43%. Six years old. I did find this actually on Masters of Malt in England. Um, it wasn't available at the moment, but they actually had the bottle on sale before, and someone apparently bought it for 242 euros, which is amazing. I wouldn't have done that, but collectors do weird and crazy things. All right. That's weird. Okay, comes in nice. But then it's really just pepper hot alcohol. And then the alcohol does subside a little bit. And those nights, the wild cherry comes through. The butter on the on the corn on the butter on the grill comes through. A little bit of the wood comes through. That caramel, um, a little bit of that salt water taffy is there, as well as a little bit of caramel and um, toffee is there. And that really goes up. But then what happens is that aftertaste, it's a bitter type of, um, have you ever had like new leather? I mean, like really new stuff. And it just has that taste and that smell that's a little bit still astringent, a little bit chemical. And that's what I get. Oh, ooh. All right. Um, not my friend. One last try here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And goes off. 
Then it goes back down. I like my transitions, by the way. I like it when it does this. <laughs> and this just goes down and then up and then back down. And that's not great. Mm, that aftertaste is really not my cup of tea. No, 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 no. I'm going to give this a C plus. Maybe even a C plus plus. I don't know if that's even possible. And now the value for money. Sorry, it's no longer available. Um, I have a friend who has a friend. Um, there's a website online in German called fassstark.de. That'd be cast strength, um, .de for Germany, Deutschland. And um, he has a bottle. He had a bottle of this. And this was one of this. This is almost the second to the last sample he had of this. This is a 4CL sample. I paid like 15 euros for this. Um, very good stuff to have to present as rare and exotic whiskeys that I love doing. But it's not a sipper. It's not something that I'm going to actually go out and say, hey, that last sample here, I'm going to give you 20 euros for it. Can I have it? Mm -mm. Not my cup of tea. All right. Very good. So Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. I have my videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday mornings that come out. And I'd be happy if you'd leave a comment. Hey, what are you doing correctly, Jason? What's going on? Hey, how is it? Or what you're doing, Jason, that's terrible. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Also, positive affirmative criticism would be welcomed. And I thank you very much for watching. If you speak German, I have a German channel, Whiskey Jason. And you can actually watch daily videos about whiskey, bourbon, scotch, Irish whiskeys, world whiskeys that I produce there. All right. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.